I'm not easily spooked. It takes a lot to throw me off balance. But the story I'm about to tell really did shake me up and left me wondering if it's ever really going to be over. I'm a 29-year-old single woman. My career has been my main focus, and as a result, I've been successful at what I do. I'm a safety consultant, and I go to people's homes or workplaces to improve the safety. Maybe it's my profession that made me feel like nothing bad would ever happen to me. Spotting risks and dealing with them is what I do best. It started innocently enough. The first time I remember seeing him was when I was stuck in traffic and he was the driver in the car behind me. I saw him in the rearview mirror. He was smiling and do a, what can you do about it gesture. He had snacks and a thermos and started to make himself comfy in his car. He seemed like a relaxed kind of guy. The cause of the traffic block was an accident and we were stuck for a long time. I guess that's why I remembered his face in his car so well later. Later, that same week, I was on my way home from work, which is a 20 minute drive, and I spot his white Volvo behind me once more. I make my way through town and he's still behind me. At this point, my overly risk calculating mind tells me not to go straight home. I was not feeling threatened or scared, just mentally making notes that this man seems to drive the same exact route as I. I stop at a coffee shop and set off on a mission to feed my caffeine addiction, and when I came back out, I had almost forgotten about the Volvo. Until I stop at the last red light before reaching my street, and I see him again. I wondered if he wanted to ask me something. As I got out of my car, I had my pepper spray ready in my pocket, just in case. But the Volvo drove straight past me, the driver not even looking my way. I'm just being overly paranoid then, I thought. My coworker said it would happen if he stayed in this business long enough. Fast forward a few days. I was working late one night when I suddenly got a text message. I got the kind of alarm system at my house that will send you a text if anyone tries to get in or tamper with the alarm. I hurried home to check, but found nothing out of order. A case of malfunctioning, maybe? The next morning, my boss phoned and asked if I would go and meet with a client out of town. He had asked for me, a recommendation from another client. Flattered and eager to land a new big client, I agreed. Since I have zero talent for reading maps and finding my way, I used the GPS in my phone to get the address right. The longer I drove, the less eager I became. The risk calculator in my mind woke up, pointing its index finger at all the things that didn't totally make sense. Why did the client say no to the normal process? It's just a telephone contact to discuss the situation and get a picture of what it can cost to get us involved. Why a meeting right away? And without giving any details about what sort of property it was? I stopped the car and considered the situation. Was I overthinking it? Had I started to become really paranoid without noticing? Or was there something strange about this? I decided that I was probably seeing patterns that weren't there and went ahead to find the address. It was hard as the GPS on the phone stopped working. No service out in the middle of nowhere and all. As I saw the property, I got a strange feeling again. It didn't look like a place anyone would invest any significant amount of money in to protect. It was an old building old tires and junk scattered around the yard and nothing of value anywhere to be seen. Who would want to go out of his way to protect this? Following my instincts, I drove around the property to the back of the building. I didn't see anyone around, which added to the growing feeling of get the fuck out. As I drove around the corner, I saw a tarp covering a car. The tarp was too small to cover the entire vehicle, and I immediately recognized the shape and color of the white Volvo. I locked the doors and started to turn the car around. Suddenly, there he was, blocking my exit. He was dressed in a suit that looked like it had last seen the light of day when his grandpa was young. He wasn't smiling anymore, not looking like a nice, relaxed guy, looking nervous, 
and strained. He started walking towards me, and I saw that he was wearing thick leather gloves, despite the hot weather. I looked for an alternative way out. Because let's face it, you don't want to run a person over if you can avoid it. It would be hard to claim self-defense without any harm done to me. Maybe he was just a socially challenged person who didn't know how to show his interest in a normal way. Come on out, he said. His voice sugar sweet, but his face showed no emotion. Get out of my way, I shouted, opening the window a tiny bit. I just want to talk. Please shut the engine off and talk to me, he pleaded. I made scones specially for you. I just want to chat. Saying this, he looked very sad and defeated and lonely, and I almost fell for it. What if he was really lonely and just wanted to invite someone over and had no idea how to do it? The gloves, the hidden car, the alarm system at your house, my inner voice reminded me. Please don't be mad. I just wanted to surprise you. Don't you like surprises? All the magazines say that you should surprise your lady with spontaneous romantic things, and I cooked just for you. Please, at least let me show you the decorations I made. Please? He thinks I'm his girlfriend. Holy shit. Okay, I smiled. I understand. You spooked me at first, that's all. But I recognize you now. I'll just park the car on the front yard, and then we can go have scones. The moment I finished my sentence, he started shaking his head no. Park here. It's okay. Okay, I said, still smiling as convincing as I could, turning off the engine. Then I started pulling at the locked door, pretending it was stuck. Oh my god, the door's doing this again? <sighs> I sighed. Damn it. I meant to get it fixed, but I never have the time to get to the garage. You know what it's like, right? Maybe you can do it for me someday, sweetie? He nods happily and runs up to the car to help me with the door. Pull downwards and give it a yank real hard, I instructed as I slowly moved my hand to the key in the ignition. I got the car going with him still holding onto the door for dear life. He cried and screamed and kicked as he had to let go. I drove home, constantly looking in my rearview mirror, half expecting to see the Volvo. As I stopped at a gas station to phone the police and my boss, I started to feel sorry for him. How sad a life he must have. The police arrived at the location, but the Volvo man wasn't there anymore. Turned out he didn't own the place either. It was all a lie. They did find a table set for two, with roses and scones, and now cold tea. They also found a box in the bathroom containing duct tape, cuffs, a woman's nightgown, and a jewelry box with an engagement ring. In the kitchen, in an old bread box, they found photos of me taken from a car and photos of my house. I don't know if this is over, if he has found someone else to propose to, or if he's planning to try it again with me. I have since started to bring my gun to most places, and if he does try again, I'll be ready. A part of me feels sorry for him, for being so at odds with the rest of the world. Another part, my inner survivalist, is ready to take him down the moment he suggests we have scones and tea again creepy phony client man I hope you get the help you so seriously need and that we never meet again it wouldn't end well for you hey everybody I'm Bella Dadwood and thank you for watching my video this woman for all that she went through was very understanding and I have to applaud her for that but just because you feel sorry for the person stalking you doesn't mean you should go easy on them. Do whatever you can if you feel like you're being followed, stalked, or harassed in any way. As usual, any suggestions that would make these videos better 
or suggestions you have for future videos are welcome. Just go put them in the comments below. If you don't want to do that, you can also private message me and I will reply to you as soon as I see it. Thank you once again for watching and until next week, I'll leave you with your nightmares. Good night, guys.